Colin has come to Birmingham. He doesn't know where the buses are. He knows no car parks. He has never been here. How will he get to his aunts in one piece? Explore this proof of concept to find out. So here at Microsoft, we're just about to start a proof of concept in the Microsoft Technology Center. We're here to do an Intelligent Cities proof of concept with Birmingham City, Coach University Enterprises, one of our partners, Shoe Hill, and a couple of other um, members of the Intelligent Cities Consortium. So the name Intelligent City comes from an award which is given out annually by the World Teleport Association to recognize intelligent cities, so cities that are you know, really connected in ways that uh, previous cities weren't. Birmingham wants to go for this award in order to draw in jobs, people, tourism, invest in research and development and become you know, tomorrow's city, as it were. There's three strands to the Intelligent City Initiative, which is intended to complete in 2012. Intelligent tourism, intelligent transport, intelligent security. For this proof of concept, we're going to focus very heavily on the intelligent transport side of things. And when we're finished, let's come back, have a look at what we've built, see how we get on. All right, so the Intelligent Cities proof of concept in bite-sized pieces. We've built a service platform. That's the bit that's got all consolidated logic. It's WCF, and you can plan routes, that kind of thing. Birmingham at a glance, congestion, live buses. You can see what the availability is on car parks. Travel planning. So you can say, I want to go from here to here, and it tells you how to do it. It does that on roads, but also you can do it multimodally, so you can go with walking and with buses. Sat now for public transport. Full of mobile device, you can get on and off buses. It walks you around the city. Don't get lost again. Great. Enhanced sat nav. It's like a sat nav, but it tells you which car park you can go to, and if the car park fills up while you're driving along, you can dynamically adjust the route. That's it. So let's plot a route. Yeah, so here you're you know, going from postcode to postcode. Um, we're going to say that we want to leave midday. Uh, sounds like a good idea. And we're going to walk and take the bus. Because we've got real-time information, so we know what's happening at that time of the day. Absolutely. So it's calculating the route here. Um, it's taking into account roads. It's taking into account the bus routes. And it also knows the bus timetable, so when the buses turn up and how long they take. It's taking all that into consideration and giving us a route across Birmingham, uh, so you can see it's you know, a couple of roads and then get on a bus. So in red, this is where I'm walking and then I join a, That's right. a bus stop. Absolutely. Um, the other thing that this application will allow you to do is to, is to save this route and also to share this route. So if you save it, you'll be able to pick this very same route up on a mobile device. And that's what we can see happening here. So uh, we're going to log in. Um, uh, this is a proof of concept. Doesn't look like the right way to be hiding your yeah, password, does it? No, not really. You wouldn't do that. And you'd probably pick a better, pa better password too. Um, but we can save the the route. So and next time you go to Antis, you can. Um, well, you can pick this up on your mobile device immediately and then guide yourself around. We, we'll have a look at that later. Right, so this is the mobile part of the uh, proof of concept. This is uh, not really a real mobile, obviously. This is a, an emulated mobile. Only Dom Joy's got a phone this size. But if you imagine that this would run on a mobile device, it runs on Windows Mobile, and it's taking advantage of things like GPS and so forth, so it knows where you are. We've logged in, we've retrieved the journey that you saw us plot across Birmingham before, and you can see that it's going to tell us to walk along uh, the, up to Collingwood Drive. This section is going to take us 10 minutes, and it's about 0.8 kilometres. It'll guide us along uh, you know, where, we go, where we need to go forwards, where we need to turn left, the names of the streets, which is really helpful. And then here's the overview of the journey. So we need to walk, we need to wait for a bus, get on the bus, and crucially, get off the bus, which solves that real problem. When you get on the bus, where do I get off? What are those familiar landmarks that you, you, you may or may not know in the city? And this can alert you and tell you when to get off the bus. So what, what you can see starting to happen here is that you can see us starting to move around the route and people are waving in the background. Um, we can also see that it tells us roughly how long the journey is going to take, how long the journey is going to take overall, and what the next section is going to be. And here's information about the bus, what time is it going to turn up, what the bus number is. This is the kind of really useful information you can carry around in your pocket, and this can guide you around Birmingham without any of the kind of problems that we know we face when we try and do that today. One of the things that's at the heart of the uh, proof of concept is a service platform and we wanted to show that you could extend that in interesting ways and the way that we chose to do that was by building this mock-up of a sat-nav unit. So what you can see here is a WPF application that's pretending to be a sat-nav and you know, there's a normal kind of stuff where you can pick a postcode and a road and say you want to take your fastest route. Here's a bit that's different though, you can say I want to go to a car park and then what it'll show you when you click yes I do want to go to a car park there's a number of car parks that are available near your destination. So you can see five here, you can see the car park capacity, the current occupancy. There's a fictitious cost per hour, obviously in the real world we could have got the real car park costs. 
So you see how many car park spots are available. That top one is the most convenient. It's looking a little bit full, but it's the most convenient, so that's the one that we pick. And it plots a route, just like your sat-nav does today. One thing that can happen, though, when you're driving into a city, and Birmingham is a city that not everybody knows that well, is that the car park can fill up. And that's what we choose to show in this uh, demonstration. So that as you're driving along into the centre of Birmingham, the, the car park spaces that were empty become filled. Now, what do you do in that, normal, in that situation normally? Normally, you don't know what to do. In this instance, the sat-nav will alert you the minute it knows that those car park spaces are no longer free. Do you want to go to the nearest car park, it says, and you say, yes, please, and it routes you dynamically to the nearest available car park, in this instance, the NIICC South Upper. So now that we're being routed to that car park, we don't have to worry, there's plenty of spaces on that, and were that to fill up, it could do the same thing again. When we get to that car park, of course, we can use the mobile device that we showed earlier, and that can route us to the offices or the friends that we were going to go and visit so that we're not left at some car park in the middle of a city that we don't know. So this solves the... So we just finished that uh, proof of concept. So there was you and there was Neil down here. What roles did you have on the, uh, on the project? Uh, so myself and Neil, um, we were mainly doing the, uh, the front end um, and to the application. Neil was involved in all the JavaScript programming and the virtual earth um, programming and also hooking up to all the web services that, uh, that you were involved in. Um, and myself, I was doing the... Uh, Satellite navigation system, which uh, which involved uh, WPF. And the WPF, that's not something you've used before, so no. how did that work out? Um, exactly, it, it was something, uh, the, a technology that you've always heard about, uh, read a lot about, but never having the time to actually get involved in. Um, so to, to get involved with a, a project that used WPF uh, to, to, to get solve a, a, you know, a problem like this uh, was really useful and it's something I'd definitely be taking forward. So it was uh, three weeks, proof of concept. It was Eight of us, I'd say. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what does it what does it feel like compared to a normal project to come and do a proof of concept? Um, it's really good actually because you you get a dedicated amount of time and obviously a, a dedicated team uh, to do um, this proof of concept. And uh, in, in three weeks, I think we did an, an amazing amount really. Uh, and I think that's that's just uh, down to the fact that we had the right people, um, we had the right um, lead on the project, uh, and we had a very focused intention. Uh, of what we're going to deliver. And what did the other guys from Shira, the guys that weren't as involved on the three-week proof of concept, what was their reaction when they saw the outcome? Uh, totally amazed, yeah. Uh, I think they didn't realise uh, that we could get that much done in three weeks. And also they don't realise what's involved in the three weeks, uh, in the challenges we had uh, during that three weeks. Um, some uh, were quite, uh, quite steep um, in, in terms of technical challenges. Um, but uh, we, we delivered at the end of three weeks, and, and that was because of the team uh, and the dedicated time we had on, on the project. And looking forward, I mean, this is part of a part of a big project that uh, Coventry and Birmingham putting together. Is, is that something that you're expecting to be associated with now for some time? Is that right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We know it's uh, it's quite a long uh, uh, project going forward, uh, so lots of um, lots of uh, problems to be solved, uh, but lots of great technology to be. Uh, to be uh, encountered along the way. And you had some involvement before the project started, before the proof of concept started, with things like the um, fuel cell cars and so forth, which was quite interesting. Yeah, the fuel cell car was, uh, was an interesting one. Uh, obviously, the, um, the uh, current climate is uh, with fuel prices as they are, obviously, new uh, third generation um, hybrid cars coming out now, uh, and the fuel cell uh, project was one of those where we're basically plotting a, um, a hybrid car uh, on a map. Um, and also, um, interestingly, actually putting data back from the fuel cell mm. to show how efficient it is as it's going around, um, which is uh, which is again I think uh, one of the one of the first uh, implementations of this on the, uh, anyway in the world. Great, and that's what led up to the proof of concept. So I guess the other question about the proof of concept would be that if if someone was was thinking about doing a proof of concept, what do you think the sort of the benefit of doing one is? Um, I think it's it's just um, because. Um, you can actually appreciate um, what's involved in, in getting a project like this uh, going. Right. Um, and initially, you can you can map out the kind of things you need uh, for a proof of concept. But actually, understanding the technologies involved and the problems that you might come across, uh, I think that's where the proof of concept comes in. It's totally invaluable. No, I think the other thing is that you, is you can you can see something real as well. Yeah. So that people can actually almost touch what they could have. I think that's, that for me is another. Yeah, exactly. It answers questions that, that a lot of a lot of people have: is is uh, can it be done? 
and is it going to solve the problem that we're trying to solve? Yeah. Uh, and and this, this absolutely sort of proved that. Great.